Hare Krishna. So in the last verse, that is verse number uh, 12, we saw that uh, Bhishma blew his conch shell. And when Bhishma blew his conch shell, Duryodhana was very happy. And obviously we discussed the other reasons also, that what does Bhishma blowing the conch shell indicates. Now today we'll be seeing two verses and we'll see the other side. So till now we have seen a lot about the side of Kauravas. Now let's see what's happening on the side of Pandavas. Now very, very nice verses. We'll discuss two verses today. Verse number 13 and 14. So verse number 13 goes like this. Tatha shankhas cha bheryas cha panavanaka gomukhaha sahasaivabhya hanyanta sashabdas tumulobhavat So what happened? After Bhishma blew his conch shell, everyone around, now they became very energetic and eager to fight. See, when it comes to Kshatriyas, they always wait you know, for an opportunity for fighting. So here, as soon as you know, they heard that indication that war is about to begin, everyone became extremely eager you know, for fighting. And what did they start doing? They, start, uh, they started blowing conch shells and they started blowing various instruments. So in the verse it says, Shankhascha, they started blowing conch shells. Bheriascha, they started playing large drums. Then Panava, they started playing small drums. Anaka, they started playing ketal drums. Gomukhaha, horns and trumpets. Just imagine all of this played and how was it played? They were played sahasa, suddenly, suddenly it was played. And when all of this sound started combining, hmm, shabdas, combined sound, how did it appear? Hmm? The word says tumulo, tumultuous sound, tumultuous sound. And you can just imagine, it was like a festival. <laughs> this is the beauty when it comes to the Vedic culture. Even a fight looks like a festival. In fact, now we'll see in future verses how you know, other uh, great personalities, they start blowing their conch shells. So now let's go to the, the 14th verse and discuss the same. The 14th verse of first chapter goes like this. Tatha shvetair hair yukte mahati syandane stitao madhavaha pandavas chaiva divyau shankhau pradadmatuhu So this verse or is the first verse that is talking about Krishna and Arjuna. Finally, the hero Krishna and his friend Arjuna, they are coming now. They are there in the scene. And you know, it's, it's almost like you know, there's a camera and the camera is moving from you know, one person to another. So camera was first at uh, Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya. And then the camera moved to Duryodhana. And then Duryodhana moved to Dronacharya. So camera also moved to Dronacharya. And then finally, Duryodhana started explaining about or describing uh, or glorifying all the great personalities. So all the great personalities, the camera was there. And when Bhishma blew the conch shell, the camera was on him. And finally, now the scene has changed. Everyone playing the instruments and blowing the conch shells. And finally, the camera is at the great personalities, Krishna and Arjuna. Very beautiful verse. Let's, let's analyze this verse. You'll surely enjoy this. It says, Shvetair Hair Yukte Mahati Syandane. So, Shvetair Hair Yukte Mahati Syandane. Mahati Syandane means the great chariot, very great chariot. And Shvetair Hair Yukte, it was drawn by, it was drawn by Shvetair Hair, that is white horses. So, now this speciality of this uh, chariot. Who gave this chariot? Who gave this great chariot to Arjuna? Agnidev gave this chariot. What happened is once, Agnidev was uh, burning a forest called a Khandava forest. But then, in that particular forest, there was one snake called Takshaka, and Takshaka was the friend of Indra. And when Agnidev started burning the forest, Indra couldn't tolerate that, because his friend was there, residing in that forest. So Indra started showering the rains. So one person is burning, other person is showering rains. So what will happen? Agni, Agni was not understanding what's happening. So he went and took shelter of Brahma. Normally Devi Devtas do that. As soon as some problem, they go to Brahma. 
So Brahma gave him a very, very nice advice. Brahma said, you go and take uh, help of Krishna and Arjuna. They will help you in the fight. And then Agnidev, they went to Krishna. He went to Krishna and Arjuna and he asked for help. And Arjuna, very uh, intelligently, he told Agnidev, surely, no, I am ready to fight. But then, no, you have to give us necessary weapons. And then Agnidev gave no necessary weapons. And along with that, he gave this chariot. And this chariot you know, is, is a, you know, really a great uh, chariot. And Prabhupada writes in the purport. I'll read it uh, for everyone's benefit. Hmm. Last line. Please refer to the last line. The chariot on which both the friends were seated had been donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna. And now what does this chariot indicate? Look at this. And this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. Can you imagine this? Such a great chariot that was. Wherever it goes, it will conquer those particular places. So this is the first line. Shvetair hair yukte mahati syandane. Now the next word is titav. Sitav means situated in that particular chariot. Who were situated in that chariot? Here it is given. Madhavaha, Pandavaha. Madhava basically means the husband of Madhavi. And Pandava is son of Pandu, who is a husband of Madhavi, the goddess of fortune, Krishna. Very beautifully in Brahma Samhita it is said, Chanta mani prakara sadma sukalpa vriksha Laksha vritesha surabhira bhipala yantam Lakshmi sahasra shata Sambrahma sevya manam Govindamadi purusham Tamaham bhajami So Krishna is not served by one Lakshmi Sahasra shata Lakshmi is a serving how? Sambrahma With lot of respect So Krishna is the husband of goddess of fortune And goddess of fortune's name is Madhavi and obviously, the husband of Madhavi is called as Madhava. And who is son of Pandu? So, here it is said Pandava. So, who is that Pandava whom we are talking about? Arjuna. So, Krishna and Arjuna, they were sitting on the chariot. Now, the question is, why this word Madhava is used? There are so many other names, Govinda, Rishikesha, Madhusudana. Then why Madhava is used here? When very, very uh, important point that is coming up here. So, this Madhava word indicates the relationship between Krishna and the goddess of fortune. And a very important point that Prabhupada makes here, you know, very, very uh, important and uh, it reveals the importance of this word Madhava. Please refer uh, you know, to, uh, mm, I think, second, uh, second last line. Whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the goddess of fortune is also there because the goddess of fortune never lives alone without her husband. Now, this is the speciality. People are busy doing Lakshmi Puja. Are Baba. Here is the secret. Invite the husband, wife will automatically come. Invite Krishna, start worshipping Krishna, wife has to come. And here we see Arjuna was very much connected to Krishna. And since Krishna is there, Madhava is there on the chariot, Madhavi is also there. So, fortune is there when it comes to Arjuna's side. So, fortune is, uh, but obviously it's implicit now. Now, the next thing you know, that uh, we have to discuss here is this line. Very, very beautiful line. Jayastu pandu putranam esham pakshe janardhana He says, Jayastu pandu putranam Victory is of pandu putra, Arjuna. Why? Esham Esham Paksha Janardhana because Esham on his side, who is there? Janardhana, Krishna is there. And a similar verse comes in Bhagavad Gita, the last verse of Bhagavad Gita. If you get time, you can refer that. 18th chapter, 78th verse. It says, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna. Wherever there is Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanurdhara. Wherever there is Arjuna, what happens? Tatra Shreer Vijaya. Wherever there is Krishna, wherever there is Arjuna, there surely victory is present. Now in this way, we see 
that fortune and victory are there both on the side of arjuna there's one more word that is very important that we can discuss divyo it says divyo shankho pradad matuhu divya means transcendental so why this word transcendental used when it comes to bhishma the word transcendental was not used for uh, that shankha but here it is used because anything connected to krishna is transcendental transcendental means beyond human reach or spiritual so anything connected to krishna is transcendental in fact all the attributes of krishna name form qualities and pastimes everything is transcendental even his associates like arjuna all of them are transcendental so this word divya is used you know in this particular case and as we discussed in bhishma's case he blew conch and there were some indications now krishna and arjuna are blowing conch so surely there is an indication and what is that indication this indication is given in the second line in the explanation please see that the sounding of the transcendental conch shells whose conch shells krishna's and arjuna's conch shells indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side whose side kauravas because krishna was on the side of pandavas so very very clear so even when bhishma blew the conch shell same conclusion was there that there is no hope for duryodhana now here krishna and arjuna are blowing the conch shell again the same conclusion no hope for duryodhana no hope for kauravas so in this way now we see that fortune is there with arjuna because madhava is there with arjuna victory is there with arjuna because yogeshwara krishna is there with arjuna so in this way victory and fortune are awaiting arjuna this is very clear from this verse now in the next few verses that we are going to discuss we'll see a festival so many personalities will be blowing their conch shells and every personality is called out by a name and their conch shells also have some names so let's discuss that tomorrow thank you hari krishna